Hello and welcome to episode four, I believe, of Game Chat. We are the Game Club Coalition. I'm Sean and my partner over to the side here is Chase. Uh, today we're going to be doing a week in review, so to speak, of the video game news that have happened between PS5 teardown, um, some Xbox uh, Series X backwards compatibility, as well as AMD's Zen 3 uh, CPUs that were recently announced. Um, Chase, you got anything uh, else to add to that docket list? Dude, I'm uh, I'm just super excited about the. Um, I mean, we got a lot of PS5 stuff, but then we've also got the. Uh, don't forget about the backwards compatibility for PS5, and um, probably gonna look at the Digital Foundry stuff about playing backwards compatible games on the Xbox, which is interesting to say the least. Mm. Mm. Uh, Okay, so I will flip over into our first uh, segment that we got here. Oh, Chase's uh, little uh, guy is all messed up. There we go. Um, All right, so this first one is about the uh, PS5 teardown and inside look at your most transformative console yet. Man, that thing just looks huge. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's enormous, man. Uh Yeah, so um, there's a whole video linked to this. I'll link it in the description of the YouTube later, uh, as well as maybe I can do it here too on the chat. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, basically, this video goes through a whole breakdown of all the components. Uh, This thing is big and beefy. Uh, There is a lot of cooling performance, it looks like, which I'm super excited about. Um, But uh, yeah, I don't even know where to start. Oh, with the teardown? Yeah, sorry. I cut out audio um, for a second, so I missed a lot of that. But um, what, what did you say? I'm sorry. I lost all the audio. No, <laughs> First it, stream. So. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I, I was just basically introducing and just it was like an overview. I said, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, same. The, I mean, I guess the first thing to start with is actually being shown the console in the hands and touched. Right, because even yeah. with like the hands-on like experience they had, they couldn't touch it. I feel like it was because it was that same model that they're taking apart. That's what I think. I think it was like, don't touch it. We're gonna take it apart, leave it there, and they probably filmed it that same day. But um, removing the panels, man, that's oh, sick. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I can see a lot of uh, 3D printers um, on Etsy making bank on different side panels and stuff. Yeah, I think uh, that and. Um, the the what else oh god there's so yeah there's so much <laughs> the heat sink like you can see why that thing is enormous you can see why that console is over engineered i know a lot of people were um a little bit disgruntled about using a screwdriver to remove the stand i don't think it's a big deal but yeah no as much as i'd love to you know take a poke and jab at uh you know sony for having to oh you gotta use a screwdriver how it should be simpler than that I, at the end of the day i really don't think it's going to be that big of a deal um I, no I don't, I don't think it's an, an issue at all um it's pretty simple most people know how to use screwdrivers maybe one's included for a quarter knows. yeah oh, oh dude I th- cool. is my video from skype on the stream twice oh, by the way oh yeah it is uh that's because Sorry. S- <laughs> skype keeps messing up and moving your window around mine does that too it's so weird like you're you're popping all over my computer <laughs> I just want to catch that while we're doing that. But uh, <laughs> um, but God, what, what, were, what were we saying just now? The heat sink and how huge it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the oh, the screwdriver, the screwdriver, man. You can use a quarter. Yes. You can use a thick guitar pick. You can use this thing. Like, eh. you're gonna do it once a year, maybe ever. Like, I, when you set this big chunking thing up, are you really gonna just be like? <laughs> You know, no, like, I, yeah, I definitely think that uh, it, it's going to be one time, right? Mm-hmm. For the people that are standing it up, if that's a configuration, it comes in, it's ready to go. If you want to yeah. put it on its side, you're moving it. And then that's the last time you're ever going to do it. I, I don't it, the quarter is a great thing because that's on, uh, I think, both of the our vacuums is like these slots. And it's like you can use a screwdriver, but like you can also just use a coin. Yeah. And it's like, boop, pop straight out. So exactly. Uh, not, not a huge deal, but it is fun. Yeah, it's like the. It's the it's the thing. It's like oh, oh Sony, 
your backwards compatibility is a mystery until this week. And now you got a screwdriver. Right. Um, but so touching on that, it, it is a, a rather large heat sink and uh, as well as the, the fan configuration. I can't remember if it was 130 millimeter or whatever size it was, but I mean, it looks like a pretty big fan. It was fan. like a double thick. It was like, it was like they said double thick, I think 120 millimeter, 45 millimeters tall. Maybe, maybe I should have watched the video again to prep myself. Didn't wasn't ready for the quiz. Yeah. But, uh, but that, just, uh, that combined with the uh, heat sink and then the uh, liquid metal I think is is huge for the like cooling potential um, because I think we've said before that the PS4, especially the pro version, sounded like a jet ready to take off. And uh, I, I really think that this is going to be huge. And I was surprised by the liquid metal cooling portion. Yeah, because that was like a very like <laughs> big like difference. Like nobody thought that that was going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I, I that was a big surprise to me, just especially because like uh, in the PC realm, most people do that if they're hardcore overclocking or, you know, they there's somebody that feels very confident in what they're doing because um, I believe it is electrically conductive. So if you if it goes off of your your heat spreader or heat sink and touches electronics like it makes connections and like you'll fry stuff like yeah yeah it's risky but it's potential for heat transfer is I, I think i was telling you earlier in the week about 10 times that of like typical thermal pace which is uh i think that's huge for for rapid heat transfer into that heat sink and yeah. then the fan blowing everything else around is uh some great cooling potential here yeah that um by the way i got a comment saying uh your mustache is amazing bro <laughs> <laughs> It's your moist boy, Chad. Nice, thank hey. you. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only think that that's Sean. Because who else calls you Snake? Yeah. Um, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, no, the, the the liquid metal and like looking at the, you can see like the patents for it, like the blueprint kind of layout for it, and how there's like a gap between um the actual heat sink and the processor or like how it like connects because liquid metal expands and stuff so it looks like they really put a lot of thought into it and i think they had to honestly because this is unprecedented in the console really i mean i know it exists it's not like the first thing ever but i think in a console you know like yeah that's that's insane man um because the main criticism with ps4 wasn't the lack of games it wasn't that it wasn't as power, powerful as the One X, as much as people like to talk about that, and make that important. It was the heating issues, and it's sounding like a damn vacuum cleaner right. in the living room. Right. Like I, I have to crank up. I have to wear my headphones even if I don't want to, just because I just want to like actually enjoy the game and not listen to those loud fans. Man. Like one big fan is better than a bunch of small fans. It, it's going to push air with a lot less. Ooh, you know, right. <laughs> spinning bits. Um, but yeah, that, that teardown was really cool. I'm I'm a little bit like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I was more impressed with it than I thought. I, I, everyone was like, where's the teardown? And then we got it and I was like, oh, that's super sick. I wasn't interested until then. Nice. Uh, uh, I guess we'll uh, that'll we'll kind of transition back over into our uh, second article here, which is the uh, PlayStation 4 backwards compatibility um that was like sort of silently announced ish I, I know that i found this on reddit yeah. a couple hours before they put out the blog post on it where they updated the back end speaking of the playstation 4 games that will be backwards compatible gave a rundown of you know roughly 10 games um most of them older that won't be compatible um but there's also been this weird trend now where i'm seeing on twitter all these individual developers like naughty dog and um, Santa Monica Studios coming out and saying, hey, yep, our whole uh, catalog of games is going to be backwards compatible, which is neat, but I feel like that should be a given with the way they've tried to uh, speak about backwards compatibility. Right. It, it's a weird, like, unspoken embargo, it feels like, that was lifted. As soon as Sony was like, here's all the stuff about backwards compatibility, everyone was like, oh, finally, we can tell everybody that, yep. Our game's backwards compatible. And then to come out and say um, that the, uh, what do you call it? That 
the save files are going to be on a developer by developer basis. You know, like that, that, that was interesting for somebody to kind of clarify that. I do see that my, my face keeps, my screen keeps resizing. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. I don't, I don't uh, know. <clears throat> super odd. Um, oh, I think it might, it doesn't matter either way. Uh, the backwards compatibility though, coming out in full swing at first, it was like, we've tested 99%. I think people thought when they said 99% of the games being backwards compatible would be 99% that they tested. But now it sounds like literally 99%, which is what they meant. But I know that it, a game of telephone, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it changes on the internet, but it's, um, it's refreshing. It's nice. There's still a lot of like weasel words and I know it's like covering their butts in a way. So like talking about like some may experience errors and like don't buy add-ons if you haven't tested it. Like, so they're kind of just preparing for the worst, I guess, probably for their support center. Yeah. <laughs> when they're like, you said this was backwards compatible. You know? It's like, well, okay. actually it's not. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but um, it's it's good. I, I'm I'm just re I'm just relieved to see Sony talking about stuff because the longer they stay quiet on things where, um, even though it's not like a direct comparison, I know with the Series X and PS5 and Microsoft's approach to marketing and Sony's, the longer they stayed silent about stuff, the the more like, uh oh, <laughs> yeah, what's going on? But then they come out and confirm what we hoped would be true, and it's like, oh, okay. Cool. Like, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, I don't know, man. Joe's Diner. Yeah, I right. Joe's Diner on PS5. Joe's Diner, no. I gotta um, hold on to my PS4 for that one. I do know that uh, some some developers said that they were working on patches for these to be uh, playable on the PS5, which is good. Um, but, yeah, like, with uh, Santa Monica Studios saying that like oh yeah the, our whole catalog or whatever is going to be backwards compatible including god of war and x y and z and it's like well i hope god of war is it's in the ps plus collection for <laughs> ps5 owners only like good point yeah <laughs> uh it, it's again it's confirming what we knew without actually having a confirmation except a definite confirmation <laughs> and they didn't really try to most of these people that have said this they didn't even try and use that to say like oh and playing in boost mode it will get 60 fps right like that was a nice right. way to say it's backwards compatible and then here's the additional features those would have been like catchy news bits to like grab onto. yeah and that's um and i know we're going to kind of transition to xbox soon but that's the thing, the difference of having the Xbox Series X hands-on. Like, you know, everyone's complaining, like, they're just showing last-gen games and backwards compatibility. We're not seeing any next-gen things from Xbox. Who cares? And then PlayStation 5 is like, here's all these PlayStation games on the PS5, or well, two of them, with the hands-on thing. And it was like, well, how's backwards compatibility work? So it's like, on one side or the other, frustrated or super happy. It's weird, but, um, uh, yeah, I just... I'm happy that they're clarifying things. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next one I got on the docket is actually going to be a quick one, but uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare now exceeds 250 gigabytes and no longer fits on a single 250 gig SSD for those people that bought one specifically for it. How? Why? <laughs> so. Why? <laughs> Yeah, it's not, there's not a, a ton in this article because I don't think it really needs to be, but the recommended free space uh, for it that's on the game says like 175 gigabytes or something like that. Um, but now with all the other updates, it is bigger than 250 and anybody that uh, purposely bought a 250 gig SSD trying to save some money and get some improved performance on this incredibly large game. Um, Oops. <laughs> sorry <laughs> which I, wild. I I think it's so <laughs> crazy that a, a single game nowadays like you know we've kind of joked about the um, PlayStation and Xbox having so you know somewhere between 600 and 800 uh, gigabytes available for storage of games these next PS5 and Series X um, that's a third on the PlayStation for, and for call yeah. of duty so call of duty yeah <laughs> it, it, if it you know normally it's like okay game is 
20, 30, 40, 60 gigs, maybe 100 gigs, something like Destiny right now, which they're trying to shrink in the future here. But 250 gigs exceeding, I think that is just like... For... For... Uh, 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 like... So there, there were like rumors, or at least like patents and stuff for the idea of downloading portions of games on the next generation of consoles, at least... Sony did mm -hmm. have that. Is that going to help parse this out a bit? But I don't know. I just... 250 gigs for Call of Duty? Yeah. Jeez. Like, that's like two and a half the times of... El oh, and we've got a disconnect there. Sorry about that. <laughs> reconnecting we'll see oh no tragedy strikes hello can you hear me online yeah yeah all right i can hear you now yeah, yeah. I, I i saw that i was frozen you cut out your face was frozen time. yeah yeah i was just saying breath of the waifu was uh, like 10 gigs, 11 gigs, so I can have like 25 of those yeah. to one Call of Duty. I'll take Breath of the Wife 25 times over Call of Duty. I don't care. I'm just kidding. Nobody quote me on that. Uh, don't say anything. <laughs> uh, so the next one we've got up is um, the Digital Foundry video talking about the Xbox Series X backwards compatibility yeah, interesting one. with uh, solid state um the different options basically for storage whether you're getting the um you know an external sata drive an external nvme the proprietary seagate uh, and it was pretty interesting in what they uh, showed in a lot of this with their speed tests is that um games load incredibly fast on the series x however sometimes the storage doesn't matter uh, it might load the same on an NVMe external as it does on a SATA external, like cutting it down to some games like 12 seconds. However, these games running on the same external SSDs on the Xbox One X um, is a significantly lower time. So a lot of what's attributed to this increased uh, speed uh, or decreased uh, load times, I guess I should say, is uh, actually the processor in the way that it's able to like read all the data and spit it out. Yeah, um, that's crazy. And he also did a lot of speed tests uh, with transferring from internal to external on both systems. Um, and it was it was a uh, it was pretty incredible the uh, the results they got. Where it's like Series X just loaded everything faster, did absolutely everything faster, and a lot of it's based on that the CPU and what it's able to do. Um, versus what was shown on the uh, Xbox One X. Uh, yeah. Um, hold on oh. one sec. <laughs> What's that? Nothing. Scene changed and then for whatever reason Skype's uh, being all crazy tonight. My face is on there. Uh, so, yeah, no, this is a... Uh, I think it really speaks a lot for the um, architecture of the systems, really, and the 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 power and what all that equates to, right? Like it's the not just it's not just um, the the fact that there's an SSD. It's that there's this CPU there to kind of like read all the data faster and, and process everything and spit that all out. And we're not even yeah. seeing stuff that's like designed around uh, these features as we've talked about. So. Um, at the end of the video, basically, they essentially say that for any games that are going to be Xbox One backwards compatible, just a SATA drive with a um, SATA to USB connector, some sort of housing or something is fine. They give a lot of recommendations. Um, and uh, that's like that's the best spot for all your backwards compatible stuff basically yeah until they're enhanced like if it gets enhanced of some sort it might be worth putting it on the internal or the uh the specific nvme but um yeah it's uh it's pretty crazy yeah it's super um 
nice to see because I think that with the cost of NVMe Drive expansion, whether it's the proprietary one from Microsoft and Seagate or how PlayStation's handling it with just any NVMe Gen 4, oh, once Sony puts out the list, right? But yeah, um, having that external drive to hold local like games that are important to you in your backwards compatible library um, is going to be a huge huge thing considering we've got games like call of duty 250 gigs right <laughs> like right well it might, and, might be nice to have that external and realistically uh, a sata drive two terabyte you can get right now for i think 200 is a really good price uh upwards of like maybe 230 250 um sometimes i know you know before the pandemic started black friday last year i got one for about 160 um but nice. you can get a two terabyte ssd that can be all your backwards compatible catalog, basically all improved performance, not only from the SSD, but as well as the uh, Xbox Series X um, at the same price as one of these one terabyte Seagates. So you're getting double the storage. So, that's true. you know, dollar for dollar, that's your best bet. Yeah, 100 um, percent. But yeah, those tests that they show were they were, they were interesting to see. Yeah. Especially the Xbox One versus the Xbox Series X. I know it's like a different generation, but like that process is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Really cool. And we've all heard that the performance difference on backwards compatible games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and all that kind of stuff, like even third party. um, 60 frames a second, silky smooth, super fast load times. Like that's awesome, man. Yep. Final Fantasy 15 and Monster Hunter World, I believe, were digital foundries like you know and i oh and hitman those three titles though because they have you know natively unlocked frame rates and can play in a higher resolution um that they're hitting like a pretty stable 60 or even one or two of the games like when it does dip it dips to like 57 59 you know what i mean like it's close enough to where it's like it's uh negligible even on most tvs or whatever where you're not going to notice it it's just going to be some odd frame pacing um, yeah, but it doesn't have better than what often. it was. So to see that like potential just straight up unlocked from there, um, I think is a, a really, really interesting and exciting for for consoles uh, in general going forward. Right. Because to a certain degree, PCs always have that you upgrade your graphics card, you upgrade your CPU, you pump in higher numbers. Right. Crank up yeah. the settings, whatever it is. And a lot of those cool. games on PC are scalable in that sense. Um, right. So it's it's nice to see that just like right from the get go, and I really hope that PS5's boost mode acts in a similar way, right? Where a lot yeah. of games do kind of see some increased performance. And I recall on the PS4, there were several games where it's like, cause I always ran in boost mode, but I remember looking up some initially and then speaking of some where it's like, it, it helps the performance just be like a little bit more stable where some people might be like, oh yeah, the frame rate was kind of like, wavering all over the place or there was dips or something where it's like oh i didn't experience that or um neo too yeah on a ps4 pro was like night and day i think uh you me and when we you me and matt would play he would complain about frame rate issues and we're like no issues here (laughs) um but uh one thing back to that that backwards compatibility and the playstation collection thing um just thought of it again you know, the developers have to release an update to unlock that frame rate if they're not unlocked from the get-go. Now, Bloodborne is not unlocked. Um, and From Software is like, I mean, the uh, the frame rate's not unlocked. So it's stuck at 30 frames no matter what, unless From Software updates it. Some dude made a patch and played it on PS4 Pro just today, I think a video came out. I wish I had the link right now, but um, you can probably still search it. But Uh, running at 60 frames on the PS4 Pro. So my only hope is that it being part of the PS4 collection is that that is going to incentivize or be already a deal that hasn't been revealed um, to have that unlock update to the frame rate from from software. Because it would be kind of not as cool to like have your PS4 collection on PS5 and then have this game like Bloodborne that is like a masterpiece not enhanced for ps5 seems weird it seems just like but um either way i'll play again (laughs) okay but if they if they did it and my if my save file didn't even move i'd be like (laughs) 
60 frames, I'll do it. One of the games that I would probably be fine <laughs> if the save file didn't transfer over for whatever reason. Be like, oh yeah. no, I gotta play it again? Darn. Oh, I gotta play this perfect game again. Yeah, it just sucks. <laughs> Damn. Even God of War, honestly, I'd play that all again. Because God of War was yeah I, I actually recently picked up god of war again because i wanted to play with new game plus which i hadn't done and i was missing like one or oh, two I haven't done that. and um i was like oh sweet you get to keep all your stuff like this is awesome right from the get-go um and i started playing it and i was like man i know i i love this when i played it but like it is so hard sometimes in some of the scenes in action where I'm just like the 30 FPS just is like oh, right. sort of killing it for me. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. It's just, uh, so it, uh, I was really well, able to you, play you it. You played that before you got on PC like hardcore. Yeah. And you're like, this is amazing. And then you play Destiny at like 120 frames a second and you're like, <laughs> my eyes hurt. Yeah, 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 I think I complained when uh, <laughs> when I could only get control to run with, at 60 frames a second with mm -hmm. medium RTX. I was like, I, I wish it could go higher. <laughs> like, uh, Nerd. No, but, uh, yeah, no, that that's... Uh, I, I really hope for Bloodborne 2 that there's some sort of patch to at least kind of update that to allow 60 FPS. Um, yeah, buddy. That would that be huge. Happy lump. That, that would that would be like that'd be like getting a Demon Souls remake as a launch title, right? <laughs> oh. That's the that's a level of like dopeness. It's like oh, which which okay. uh, since we're on this, I, I may as well we may as well touch on this. I was actually thinking about this earlier. Oh yeah, how much more um, sort of credibility or viewership? demon souls is going to get because it's a launch title how much more how many more people are going to be looking at it and picking it up because it's like oh this is one of the very few new next gen games that is only for next gen only available on ps5 designed for it from the ground up so to speak um when there's not a ton right stuff like miles mm -hmm. morales um little big planet whatever that's called sack boys adventure several of those games are going to be on ps4 <laughs> little big as sack well. boy <laughs> little sack big it's super boy. fun uh it's cute you know there's a lot of those games that are coming to ps4 and, and are going to be backwards compatible same thing with a lot of third party stuff but with with demon souls you're getting something that's new and next gen and i and like From we've talked jump. about before how this is kind of a niche game it's for a specific hardcore group of people you know we'll see mm -hmm. how much more accessible they make the game um once we get it in our hands but i'm so excited i i was just thinking about this earlier today like how much broader view how many more people are going to be looking at it and playing at it not knowing anything about it other than it's it's next gen because i think i said right when, when ps4 pro came out i bought stuff like ratchet and clank and a bunch of other games because it had the upscaling to 4k or better resolution or new mode or something like that so I just uh, I did want to touch on that because I think that's that's pretty great, especially for a game that is such kind of uh, specific group of people. Yeah. It's not going to be that uh, we're not going to have that knack experience, right. you know, <laughs> but knack was harder than than Demon's Souls because nobody wanted to play it. Demon's Souls, everyone's going to want to play it, but it's going to be hard. Right. Um, but yeah, I hope that there's some like quality of life improvements. Just I don't want I don't want to ruin the DNA of the game, but like in Demon Souls, if I remember correctly, every single item you carried, whether you equipped it or not, weighed something. So you'd constantly have to manage your inventory, and it was just like um, it was fine. I love the game. It's the reason I bought a PS3, and Bloodborne is the reason I bought a PS4. Demon Souls again, reason I'm buying a PS5. Also, it's a PS5. Like that's just my brain, but. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm super stoked to just revisit that game. I I don't know why I'm a masochist, I guess, but it looks really good. Yeah, it looks no, visually I'm, stunning. I'm actually very interested myself, especially because um, I did not really get into the Soul series until Bloodborne uh, because of you. Oh. And basically the reason I bought a PS4 was because of Bloodborne. <laughs> uh, oh, somebody uh, said the music's a little loud on our stream. Oh, oh. I just got a message. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, we're having trouble with the uh, mixers here, I guess, so to speak. Um, 
Thanks, Shane. He messaged me on Facebook. I was like, I was like, oh, damn, brother. Uh, yeah, audio mixing. Uh, because technically I can't hear the music and neither can Chase. So uh, yeah, so thanks. Yeah, we we need that kind of stuff. You know, it's our first like live stream, right? So just like thanks. Um, but um, but yeah, no, uh, Demon Souls, man. That's how it all started. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I never, <laughs> I guess getting back to the point was that I never played, Not, I definitely never played Demon Souls. And I think I played like a bit of Dark Souls or Dark Souls 2 um, when it came out on the Xbox One or something like that. Um, but Demon Souls was always the elusive one because you had to have a PS3. Um, right. So that, uh, I'm pretty excited for that. Hell yeah. Um, and, uh, So let me see what the next thing is on our docket. Let me switch over to the next scene. So uh, next up from Tom's Hardware, uh, we've got an article here talking about God, AMD but yeah, Zen I'm 3. Um, so technically they skipped the numerator 4000, uh, the previous generation Zen 2 was Ryzen 3000 series uh, and they had so many uh, come out on the uh, laptop scene that were 4000 and it got kind of messy so they're not even going to include these desktop processors they're jumping straight to 5000 so that's Zen 3 so weird naming conventions because they're Zen 2 but it was the 3000 series and now we're Zen 3 but the 5000 series and then they also have graphics cards that are in the 5000 series right now so Hooray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the the performance on them though, plus the price. I mean, you're you're way more plugged into the computer stuff than I am, which makes me kind of the layman in this situation. Right. Um, well, and I think so there's an interesting thing too when the price, like when we initially talked about it. So their their entry level is two ninety nine for a six core twelve thread. Um base clock at three point seven goes up to four point six. Um so interestingly, and right after I kind of talked about this, the entry level on all the previous years was $200. That's what I have on my system is a 3600. It retailed at $200. So we're missing that price stack here. So there is some mm -hmm. oddities with the price. However, the thing is, is that with their increase in instructions per cycle or clock, whatever it's called, as well as their ability to get higher clocks, um, they're now really competing with Intel in the gaming space and the the workspace space, which they were already kind of dominating Intel in the workspace area with Blender and a lot of visual rendering and all sorts of other stuff that is, you know, uses lots of cores. Which is surprising. Stuff. Right. Like, I, so, I felt like Intel was like the one, well, you know, and, and now it's like. And they, and they <laughs> had always been, and there was even a few uh, applications like Adobe Photoshop that like everybody uses that still favored Intel CPUs. Um, but with this most recent generation, they're actually showing stuff like Photoshop being about 5% faster than the top series Intel chip. So an interesting Dang. thought is that previously, AMD was always competing on price to performance. Yes, it wasn't always like equal in gaming to whatever their stack was for Intel. However, it was 50 to $100 cheaper. Right. So like, right. I want to get an eight core. Oh, I can get one over here for a hundred bucks cheaper. And it equal it performs about equally. Um, so now that they're on par or even beating them in both workloads as well as gaming, they're really competing on quality now, which is why I yeah. think that there's this price hike. And AMD is known to keep previous generations around when the 2000 series CPUs were out. The 1000 series still were around at a cheaper price. Um, and even once the the 3000 series came out that I got, they kept the second series around um, just at a lower price. So they, you know, you could go to Micro Center and get a, a 1600 or 2600 previous gen brand new for about a hundred bucks. So yeah, that's, they a always, sick, that's a sick price. They always try and keep when I worked previous... at Micro Center for like a week, the pricing was really good, <laughs> right? Well, Probably because they, they paid their employees so little. They, uh, they always, um, keep the previous gen around, right? To kind of fill in that product stack. And the interesting thing is, is they don't have to lower the price of the 3600 at $200 because that's a great, 
price to performance still to this day. And now it's like, that's your $200. But for enthusiasts that needs uh, more for gaming or anything else, but still being six core, you can jump up an extra hundred bucks. It's kind of like with iPhones or, or phones in general, where it's like, oh, for double the storage, it's only 50 more Just bucks, you know? Um, <laughs> but it, it's it's finally interesting to see them come out like on top in all areas because originally they were just yeah. throwing more cores but it was and it was like oh yeah blender and cinebench and all these other real world applications that they did testing on well and i feel you like know, amd was like super power hungry back in the day too weren't there chips they, like they they ran hot they, too right they were they needed a lot of power they ran hotter that was the you know what they had to do to um stay competitive kind of kind of get the performance level um and you know now it's like how the turntables with intel because they're still on this 14 nanometer from ages ago uh and it's they to get their newer gen stuff they're just giving it more heat or more power give it more power which creates more heat right so yeah um but it's it's nice to see them shake this up and uh this is shows a really strong market share for amd because of we've got the you know both the consoles coming out which have zen 2 cpu or apus in them theoretically um and then you know they've got this new lineup of cpus they've got new gpus being announced at the end of the month like amd is really like firing on all cylinders uh and i'm super excited for them yeah no and that um sorry shane was saying um that uh his liquid cooled 9590 runs at a constant 97 degrees. And I was like, Fahrenheit? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. It's going like, to explode. But um, 97 is not that hot, though, right? Like, uh, I mean, for, that's in the 20s or 30s, I think. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty good. It means you're pushing out yeah. some power, man. Well done. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Um, yeah, I remember when you were making a computer, like when you were first kind of dipping your toes back into building PCs, and you said you were going with an AMD processor, and I was like, <laughs> and you're like, no, bro. And I was like, no, -uh, Intel's the best. And then you uh, you taught me the ways of the, of the AMD and like, oh, shit. So, uh, yeah, and, and uh, another nice thing too that was uh, a nod to AMD is in a lot of their slides that they showed, they were showing, I should say in the past and from Intel and other uh, people, they'll say, you know, they'll show slides being like, oh, this much X performance. And it's always like, you know, leaps and bounds better. And AMD, some of the things are only 5% better. There was a few games that they showed off that like Battlefield says 3% worse. And I feel like it's the most honest that like somebody's been in a slideshow about trying to present like performance mm -hmm. and being like, yeah, there are some games that Intel is going to perform better. Yep and just being upfront about it that is interesting or it's like oh yeah in this game it's only five to six percent better but some games it might be 30 to 50 percent better and in that case it's like oh dang yeah that is cool though um i feel like uh, amd is the um i feel like they're the more personable of the processors <laughs> <laughs> like when i think of intel i just think of like a suit and AMD, I yeah. just picture some dude who announces a bicycle. Right. Like, that's what they did. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, the price points and the performance seem just like... And, oh, and, and they can use the same process, or the, the socket motherboard, right? The, that's been yeah, they like four years? Four years, yep. This, uh, this, <clears throat> this 5000 series is going to be the last one that's on the AM4 platform. So the, the next generation after that there probably will be a a change in the socket type or compatibility anyways um but that's been good because in not that you would want some like first generation boards holding some of the newer cpus necessarily but the fact that you've been able to upgrade and like i up i bought a, a an older motherboard because it supported the cpu that i got i got a b450 which is a previous generation one but knowing that my board, especially after the stuff they announced, I'll get the BIOS update late, but I'll be able to get one of these newer generation CPUs without having to buy a new motherboard. That's and the, sick. The, the fact that they've had that going for the past couple of years for expandability um, 
and or future upgrades, I should say, uh, has been really nice because Intel has only had one or two generations where it was like that. Every year, it's pretty much like, here's a new CPU and a new motherboard, and you got to start all over. Um, Socket so, 775. Right. That was the right. big one when I built a computer back in the day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Why does my window keep getting resized, bro? It's so weird. Uh, I don't know, man. Skype's being really weird. <laughs> Not a fan. Uh, not a fan yeah, Skype. I don't know. It was working on other nights, but I don't know. Yeah, not this time. Whatever. Um, but yeah, what are you playing? Uh, lately, I've been trying to get back into uh, Destiny with the um, uh, the new Halloween event just started. I can't remember what it's called. Festival of the Lost. Um, and I've been kind of out of that game for a while. Uh, whenever the last season happened, I popped in. And uh, straight murdered it. Yeah, <laughs> like it's done. Got to like level 150 on the season pass or something, which is higher than you need to be. Like just played the, you know, ever living crap out of the game. Nice. You know, 30, 40 hours a week. And then I got burnt out. So I haven't been playing that. I've been mixing, you know, a lot of different stuff in between. Um, I played Dead Cells for a while, but yeah. uh, just, just trying to get into this uh, Destiny event and get some... Uh, bright dust built up for future cosmetics and stuff. Yeah, and uh, shame Destiny Two on Game Pass. Mother Trucker, <laughs> yeah, boy. Um, yeah, that's actually another really cool thing. Uh, is that all the the expansion for Destiny are coming to Game Pass, including the new one Beyond Light that's coming out, which just kind of adds a deeper value to that. I know it kind of sucks for anybody that pre-ordered the expansion before they announced the whole Game Pass thing. The people that were playing. Oh yeah, what are they doing about that? You well, you bought the expansion. You own the expansion. If okay, so if it ever leaves Game Pass, you keep you it. You still own it, yeah. So it's it was kind of like um, it was kind of a bummer, but uh, it, not a huge uh, loss. Yeah, not a huge loss. And I I think it's great for the franchise too because there's it's a free to play game. So you know this just like adds to that. It's like oh hey, it's a free to play game on and on Game Pass you get. But all it's the a game as a service, right? Sean. It's a game as a service. It can't but, be good. If you get all the expansions, then the only thing that you're missing out on is the season pass. And that costs 10 bucks for three months, which I think is better than any monthly subscription that you could ever pay realistically. Right. Yeah. And that that's really not bad at all. I, 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 I'm totally cool with battle passes and season passes with games like that. Like, I know a lot of people have a problem with it. Whatever. Like, hey, you don't have to buy it. Um, oh, dude. Yeah, I did play some. That's fun. I played on the Switch. Uh, that's another game that I saw on Game Pass that I I, it's weird. I think I downloaded it on my Xbox and just haven't played it yet. But uh, I'm interested to to give it a go. I was surprised at how easily I could get killed. <laughs> like I'm this big ass monster, and these guys are like <laughs> dead. And I was like, what? Um, but it is it's a really cool Metroidvania kind of experience where you play as the creature. Um, but yeah, it is messed up. <laughs> it really is messed up. It's it's wild uh i like the animations too but um yeah and i've just i've just been tinkering around in no man's sky and breath of the waifu or genshin impact whatever like genshin impact genshin yeah, impact yeah. dude I did, I I did i did start that and play like the first hour i need to also get into that there's there's so much unskippable to play. i feel like a month or two ago or whatever i wasn't playing destiny i'm looking for stuff to play there's not enough now it's like there's all this stuff that's starting to crop up and like I'm trying to get ready back for Destiny, yeah. But then the new consoles are coming out, and so Demon Souls is going to be here Godfall. along with Godfall I'm and Spider Man. Man, yeah. yeah. Like I think there's a lot of stuff where it's like, oh man, then I'm going to want to be like console playing for a while, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it was like I I kind of went from this like you know dead zone with nothing to do, and now it's like, oh man, there's all this great stuff to play. How do I fit it into my schedule? Right. Yeah. And that's um. What's kind of fun about No Man's Sky for me is like, they just keep updating it and it just keeps getting better. Just like Destiny, right? Like you don't have to buy anything yeah. else. You can just keep going back to it and find new things to do. Um, and uh, it's it's always fun to just go back and explore those planets and fly through space. I got the PSVR, so I'm all like looking all over the place, trying not to puke, super fun. Um, but uh, Genshin Impact though, for, for free, game is really just a goofy fun stupid time like 
I'm not. I don't really want to spend a lot of money on games right now, just because I want to just. I I don't want to get something new. Like I know that Ghost of Tsushima is on sale, or at least it was, and it's um really good. Everyone says it's really good, except Donkey. Um, but right. It's like should I pick that up? And it's like I'm not gonna play it. I got a lot. I got a lot to do. So you know. Yeah, no, I think it's definitely a pretty cool looking game. I know it's a gotcha style and they want you to spend money. And, you know, if I let my kids play it, they would totally fall for that. Ultra rares and special boxes stuff. and stuff. But uh, I put some money into it. <laughs> it, it. It definitely was very, very cool. And, and it makes sense of why you could get, quote unquote, like addicted to it, so to speak, or just like be really involved in it. Um, and I'm, a, I'm interested to see how far it kind of goes or how long people play it. If it'll be something that like, kind of dies off in a couple of months and then only the diehards play yeah. it or is it like yeah it's a huge you know long lasting thing where it's like that becomes your daily driver that's your game that you always come back that's, to yeah i i don't know how that would hold up really but um forbes put an article out that was like the reason the ps5 is unbeatable by xbox is because genshin impact is gonna come to PS5. You know, it's like <laughs> it's a it's a really odd killer app, but okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's 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 fun. It's it's pretty uh, for a free to play game. It's for a free to play game, and I know China is known for kind of aping designs of other games. Breath of the Wild this time. Yeah. Um, but for a free to play game, man, uh, I'm impressed. Uh, the the production quality is great. The voice acting is just as English voice dubbed anime as you could expect and that's fun if you're in the mood otherwise just turn the volume down because you want to rip your ears off and feed it to a cat so <laughs> but what are you gonna do you know like yeah it's 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 fun um but yeah just a lot of a lot of in-between time i'm yeah. just waiting for more ps5 news i want to see how the os looks i yeah. want to see what we can do with it that that's what i'm hoping for this coming week because Still. like we got the tear down we got the backwards compatibility info yeah, still a lot of missing information, bits and pieces. We're so close. I, I think the other thing that we we uh, missed talking about was the uh, changes to trophies, uh, where they're doing a scaling oh, yeah. differently from it was mm -hmm. going from zero or one to a hundred, and now it's going up to nine ninety nine or something. So everybody basically got a boost. They restructured points and score. Um, I like it, but mm -hmm. it's like we're getting all these tidbits. But again, you know, I feel like Xbox kind of does like an info dump, and they're like, "Here you go," and then. For PlayStation, it's like, you know, breadcrumb trail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, we just dropped some information for the PlayStation 5, and it's like, for a while, it was a drought, man. Like, nothing yeah. was happening. And, like, now that they, they did the teardown, that's like, that was the biggie this week. Um, and then the, the weird kind of just, like, here's the backwards compatibility information, just with no real big announcement, was... um an interesting way to do it now actually seeing the console in action i know people are like who cares you're just jumping into a game it's like um i won't say that the ps4 is there's nothing wrong with ps4's interface okay like visually it just would be if you're playing a game like the last of us 2 or something graphically intensive it ran kind of funny it didn't run that well at least on a on a hdd not an ssd but um the dog's being crazy yeah he's probably gotta he's probably gotta go out or something who knows oh and then uh, shane also said dreams again uh yeah dreams yes. dude i played dreams in vr uh you sean actually about it while i was doing it and i was like this is amazing and i never did it again like i was in there sculpt i was like this is the coolest thing i was like sculpting all, all over the living room i was like this is awesome haven't done it since i don't know why um but it's it is so cool. Um, the controls are weird, though, man. The, the, learning that is going to be like learning Unity, like a game engine, because it, that's kind of what it is. But like, it's still just like navigating it makes my brain not function. So, but that is, yeah, that's that's kind of what we've been up to. Um, nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, it was a uh, definitely a packed week of news. Uh, I'm sure there's some tidbits that we missed and anything Always. else that comes up along the way. Well, I'm sure we'll try and catch them. But uh, other than that, I, I don't have a whole lot else. 
Yeah, no, I think that um, yeah, you definitely need to watch some tutorials. Some yeah. Tutorials, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did definitely. Um, I don't think about that watching a tutorial for a video game, but now I'm like, okay. Oh, one more thing. Yeah. In a typical Steve Jobs fashion, I'm just kidding. Um, to Shane's point about dreams and VR, the PSVR on the PS5. You need to have an adapter for the old camera to make it work. You can't use the new camera oh, to do it. Yeah. That's stupid. Yes. I don't get it. Yes. I, I I don't get it. I know that they never confirmed that the new one would, and it's only for streaming and all this other stuff. I, yeah. It's just, I don't know. That's the end of my rant. That's my rant. That's Chase's rant. We can make a graphic for it. Chase's rant. Why? <laughs> Uh, the camera came yeah. out before the VR. I just whatever. All right, we're no, good. No, I, I definitely agree. I think that's a, a, a silly uh, thing in general for the the camera to not be this. I don't know. There's a whole backwards compatibility weirdness issue with it. But uh, um, anyways, uh, my dog's going crazy. So I guess we're gonna basically sign off here. Do it up. Um, so we're definitely gonna be streaming some more uh, Twitch TV slash Game Club Coalition. Um, we're on facebook.com slash game club coalition youtube well uh i don't know that one because it's a bunch of letters because we don't have 100 subscribers so so go subscribe uh, please go subscribe <laughs> you're either Let's watching this here you're watching the video on demand on youtube uh or you can catch it over on the facebook i think we got links there to all the other sites and we're going to be linking all this other stuff back but i think the idea is we're actually just going to be streaming these shows live and then posting those as actual episodes on the YouTube uh, the day after. Um, we'll kind of see how this whole transition goes. But uh, other than that, uh, this is we'll the Game a Club Coalition. Too. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, we'll get something. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll we'll definitely be rounding up the news in the future and uh, see you then. So, yep. and uh, Game Club Coalition signing off. See ya. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>